Leaky gut syndrome is probably a disease that you haven't heard too much about, but it's one that we all need to know about because it's way more important and way more common than what I think we've all understood. Because in the past we see specific diseases, maybe chronic colic and we think it's ulcers, or chronic weight loss and we think it's nutritional or teeth or parasitism. All of these things can be affected, so from my standpoint, I have to back into these diagnoses a lot. Prove that it's not EPM, prove that it's not ulcers, prove that it's not just systemic allergies, but it is a combination of things that through leaky gut syndrome, those things are getting in our horses and affecting the outward appearance of them. If we look at this horse and we decide that we've got a problem, how do we go about deciding that it's specifically a gut issue and not something that's completely different? Yeah, that's a great question. So I start looking at compounding issues. What does my horse's coat look like? What does stool look like? As a horse owner, we were just talking about this, stool is a big thing. We can tell how healthy they are by looking at how that manure is. And then, you know, do they have uh, poor energy levels? Are they kind of lethargic? Just uh, like we talked about, ain't doing right. Is mm -hmm. there just something not going um, the way it should be going? What we do usually do is go, okay, let's compound all these. Are all of these symptoms pointing to a syndrome, that leaky gut syndrome that we were talking about? You bet. So Dr. High, you know, normally on a healthy intestinal tract, you have all those cells with these finger-like projectiles and microvilli. They're all really close together and you have these tight junctions between each cell. It keeps everything the way it's supposed to. It keeps the bad stuff out, it keeps the good stuff in, and it helps absorb all those nutrients as they're passing through the body. But what happens is when you have a highly stressed horse, those cells start to separate and it leaves those tight junctions exposed for those toxins to pour into the body or those nutrients not to, to be absorbed the way that they're supposed to. As those cells start to separate, as those toxins start to pour into the blood, we activate that immune system. And that activated immune system, there again, it's in the whole bloodstream now. So you have widespread inflammation that can target that whole animal. Uh, secondarily, you have all this, uh, these leaks and that'll lead to that diarrhea, that, that really runny loose stool that we often see with horses that are highly stressed. And then whenever I talked about that dingy coat, it's because those nutrients just aren't being absorbed the way that they should. Right. I, I mentioned that word stress and it's so important to understand the role that stress plays on this horse. So we're not just talking about normal physical stress, it could be mental stress as well. So understanding how important it is that that brain is communicating with the gut and if something's going wrong upstairs, it can cause a breakdown downstairs. So making sure that we're addressing all those things and knowing the environment that a horse has been in, that'll help lead us to that, that proper prognosis. You bet. Michael, so you mentioned mental stress on horses and I think we're probably the biggest cause of that, but the brain's connected to the gut. How does that affect leaky gut syndrome? Well, you hit the nail on the head. The brain is directly connected to the gut. There's this main nerve, the vagus nerve, that actually connects right to that small intestine. And it's important to remember that small intestine is 70 feet long. So there's a lot of cells inside of there. Every one of those cells has this enteric nerve inside of it. So you have a whole bunch of little messengers sending something back and back and forth to the brain. So let's take a, a good scenario. So say you're going to an event, right? We've all been there. We take our horse, we, we trailer it however far we get there say it's in the summertime, it's really hot. We tie that horse up to the trailer, we leave him tied for however long outside of there, and then you got everything else going on. Other horses coming and going, you have the announcer blaring, uh, just, just there's a million variables that are causing this, this impact on that horse's brain, sending those messages down to that gut. That stress itself can actually separate those cells. So that's one question I always ask, where's your horse been, what's it been doing? Where do we go from there on these horses? You know, so it, it's so unique because it's one of these things that we can actually help mitigate and we can help recover from just by better nutrition. So making sure that we're providing the right nutrients that help this become healthy. So understanding the benefits that butyric acid plays. You know, butyric acid, you know, for, for your listeners out there, butyric acid is essentially a fuel source or an energy source for those cells inside, inside the intestinal tract. So we need to provide that so they can be healthy, be more vibrant. Zinc, zinc is really good at helping those tight junctions come back together. So there again, we wanna bring those cells nice and tight. Um, and then certain amino acids are very beneficial, things like glutamine. And then lastly, prebiotics, probiotics that we've talked to in the past. Um, understanding the role that a healthy microbiome has on mitigating stress uh, or its impact on that intestinal tract. Michael, so leaky gut syndrome is a little bit tricky for all of us. I have to back into that diagnosis when we go after these things, and it's not something that requires one simple treatment. It's, it has multiple symptoms. We have to treat all those symptoms, 
and there's different ways we need to do that. How do you suggest we go about that? Certainly. So what I always like to do is, is focus on those micronutrients we would mentioned before. So butyric acid, zinc, um, glutamate, uh, prebiotics, probiotics, things like that that we know are going to help those intestinal cells. And then secondarily, management making sure that we are using the best management practices. Now, that's not to say we're not already doing a good job. It's just we can do a little bit better once we know that there's a problem going on. And then finally, checking the feed that you are feeding because certain mold spores, certain things that are actually in the feed can contribute to the breakdown of that intestinal layer. So Michael, uh, nutrition is a huge component of this, but another just as important part of this is how we manage our horses. How we make their lives. Um, what are some ways that we can do our best job with that? Well certainly, you know one of the things I see in the show horse world is stalling your horse a lot. That horse is intended to be outside, let him be a horse a little bit. That actually helps with that mental issue. Um, also making sure that our feeds are nice and clean. So you know I talked about hay having certain pathogens or molds, that can contribute to it. Getting to the show a little bit early, that really helps. Don't show up you know 30 minutes before you're going to back into the box. Get there plenty early enough that you can let your horse calm down, kind of recoup from the trip there. So when I see horses that have leaky gut syndrome, there's a lot of ways we need to address their problem. Part of it's just exactly like what Michael said, how we haul them, how we treat them, how we make their life. Um, a big part of that is nutrition. There's some really pretty hay out there that can have some bad stuff in it and we need to look. Um, from a medication standpoint, don't think of it as you're going to give your horse a shot to get rid of this or you're going to give it an antibiotic to make that go away. It's a total nutrition outlook and Kimmon has a lot of good things that we need to look at there. Well, thank you Dr. High. So you know I had mentioned butyric acid. One product that we have is called Butapro ZEQ and it's a timed released um, butyric acid. So essentially it'll bathe that small intestine in butyric acid and zinc to help tighten those junctions again, help recover those intestinal cells. Uh, Clostat, so a probiotic, we talked about the benefit of probiotics. Uh, Clostat that's gonna help battle those pathogens specifically in the small intestine to keep that breakdown from occurring. You know, knowledge is power. So as horse owners, if we can get all that information and we can go to our veterinarians a little bit more educated to share with them what's going on, we can be quicker to get a healthy prognosis and get this horse back on track. Uh, you can visit Kemen Equine, that's Kemen um, slash Leaky Gut actually, uh, for all of the stuff that we've talked about here today it has a really good breakdown so anything that might have went over your head the first time around you can go back and visit that um, also if you look at our buy it now page there's a full list of our partners that we work with that make equine feeds and supplements that are be a good solution for you you bet thank you uh, thank you